All right, folks, happy Sunday. It is October 31st. Happy Halloween. Um, but let's dive in here for the watch list for the week of November 1st. So, new month, new opportunity. Uh, and the market's just crazy freaking extended here, which has pretty much been the case for the last, uh, like, 10 days at this point. So, I mean, we're in one of these markets here where the fact we're extended, uh, the internals, just the things that are going to probably serve you well, call it 90, 95% of the time, they're really not going to serve you well here. Uh, this is kind of, you know, welcome to the circus, so to say. Now, obviously, I don't think you ignore the fact that the market is extended. And granted, extended is one thing. To get that pulled back, uh, you know, say, to the 21 EMA, you need exhaustion of all the crazy momentum that got you here. And typically, you want some sell signals. You need a few things to come together to actually get a sense that your market is going to come back in. And as extended as we are, I'm not seeing anything that points towards the party coming to an end just yet. Now, obviously, up here at 2ATR, uh, when it does come to an end, it could come to an end pretty quick. But for the time being, uh, big lack of exhaustion, big lack of sell signals, big lack of entries into 21. So I think the key in this market is to... Now, we'll take a look at a few different things here. Google, a couple good setups. But in a market like this, you're just not going to... At least as of right now, you're not getting that entry to 21 EMA. So, you know, to run the daily squeeze scans and to look for daily squeezes, sure, there's some out there, right? There's always going to be some out there. But I think the key in this market potentially is to dial down your time frame. Four hour, two hour, one hour, 30 minute chart. Look for your entries on those time frames. My only suggestion is because we are extended, not that it matters right now, but because we are extended, scale down in position size. So kind of the first one I want to cover here is a Google. Yeah, and kind of based on the rule book, the rule book that serves you well 95% of the time, Google's a bit extended here at plus 2 ATR. You're not going to get your dip to the 21 EMA, at least not in this market, at least not yet. So in terms of, you know, Google here, get the big psychological target up here at 3,000. It's just a pretty good sexy number, uh, I think at least. So in terms of trying to dictate... What's a good entry to try to catch the continuation in the 3,000? Sure, we're extended on the daily chart, so how can I find an, uh, an entry that offers a little bit of edge? And I think you scale down your time frames. So a good example here is this 30-minute squeeze right here. It has all the criteria of a daily squeeze. Or rather, it has all the criteria of a daily squeeze that I would look for. Price action above the 21 EMA positively stacked EMAs and green 10x bars. So you have the mix of structure and momentum. And the same rules apply here. A squeeze fires, you get the dip to the 21 EMA. Probably a pretty good spot to uh, think about an entry. So this is, a, this is a trade that I got the options room into last Friday. Sold the put credit spread for this coming Friday's expiration. Looking for a push into 3,000. But notice here, it's the same characteristics. So you have that same window of opportunity. You're catching that same uh, moment in time, as JC would say, but you're catching it here on a 30-minute chart. You're going to have a bit more opportunity here on a 30-minute or a one-hour in this kind of market. Another good example is check out in NVIDIA. Look at this nut job. Crazy push. So, you know, you're extended up here, as is everything else in this market. So you dial it down to maybe a one-hour chart. There's your one-hour squeeze, fits all the bullish criteria. There's your 30-minute squeeze. You know, these are the things that can offer a little bit of edge in this market. So for NVIDIA, you know, you're waiting for that next 30-minute, one-hour squeeze. Google looks pretty good. But another example of something here is Target. So you're a little bit extended. You're up here at plus 2 ATR on your daily chart. But peep the momentum. Peep the momento. Positively stacked EMAs, green 10x bars on the monthly, weekly, three-day, daily. And in a market like this where things are moving quick, the 8 EMA is oftentimes going to be the launching pad. So you get your initial push, but you tend to chop at the 8 EMA before the next push higher. So with target here, good-looking daily structure, good-looking momentum. You get that big target of the all-time high up there at 267. And as you chop here and hold support at the 8 EMA... No four-hour squeeze just yet. It's a good-looking four-hour chart, but no squeeze. 
but there's your two hour squeeze. You know, for those of you that have taken my class at Simpler, run that through the checklist. Above the 21, stack the EMAs, green tight next bars. That's a damn good looking squeeze. Same structure here to the hourly chart, same structure here to the 30 minute. So in a market like this, you're looking for momentum, but you're looking to pick your spots wisely. And I think a two hour, one hour, 30 minute squeeze on top of the 8 EMA, if the party continues and the market keeps on pumping, should offer a pretty good entry there for a potential push into the previous all time high at 267. So I like target there from that regard. Let me get my notes here. Um, all right, we got target. Next up on the watch list is Goldman. Before we look at Goldman, though, it's at least worth noting, I think. Financials look good here. So financials, energy, granted, technology is back at the all-time high. But more so the last two to three weeks or so. Financials, energy, and consumer discretionary, those have been the hottest sectors. Now technology is waking up a bit, back at the highs. But good-looking trend here to the financials. And we take a little bit of that same discussion we just had on Target, where you get your initial push, you come back towards the 8, you chop here for a bit. If this is the point you're looking for. Uh, we're close to a 4-hour squeeze. But you're looking for some kind of squeeze action. So here's a perfect example. Uh, if the trend for the financials is going to continue you know, immediately to the upside, pretty good chance that 2-hour squeeze offers a good entry. So I think... Worth noting, the financials look pretty good here. But a little bit of the same for Goldman. Nice push off the 21, chop at the AEMA. So let's run this through the squeeze check. But first, let's mark up the previous all-time high. And I like these as targets. This lines up at 420. Showing my maturity here, no jokes. Um, good looking four hour squeeze. Run it through the checklist. It's above the 21. Stack DMAs, green 10 next bars. So it's a good looking trend here, but it's just taking a bit of a breather. It's kind of just taking a chill pill, pounding some Gatorade, catching its breath before potentially the continuation, uh, you know, the next push, potentially the next push. Four hour squeeze, two hour squeeze. Uno. And a 30 minute. So I like this kind of structure. Now, if the market rolls over this week, probably not a good entry here at the AEMA. Market continues to pump. The financials continue to trend nicely. You probably got a pretty good entry here in that, uh, you know, that handful of lower time frame squeezes in Goldman for, I think, a push through 420. And you're pretty damn close at this point. So it's not asking all that much. It's about an average true range move. But I think if you're going to take that entry here, you got to love a bunch of squeezes. So Google, Target, Goldman Sachs, they all kind of fit the bill here. And last but not least, you know, run your scans tonight, all right? Run your scans, do your due diligence. I'm giving you all a few here. I think you're pretty clean. Um, but UPS, big gap up after earnings, extended as uh, all hell. But you have a bunch of momentum here. So I think, you know, a lot of times you get these big gaps. Uh, to the upside after earnings. So you get these big earnings surprises. Not always. And, and remember, right, when we discuss this kind of, you know, these kinds of things, the market's going to do, the stock's going to do whatever the heck it wants to do. But a lot of times after earnings, you get the big gap up. Stock does a pretty good job of trading sideways. So that makes it a good candidate, I think, for put credit spreads. But if we run it through the ringer here, uh, really bullish four-hour chart, no squeeze. Nothing on that two hour. I think we're getting close here. I can smell it. I can smell it. Uh, there you have it. You're a couple dots into a one hour squeeze. So it leads me to believe a 30. No, 30 minute. All we got here is the one hour. But I think the one hour squeeze, uh, one to keep an eye on. Could be a good candidate here for put credit spreads. Big gap up after earnings. Look for it to just kind of chop back and forth. But those are a few I got for y'all. Uh, you know, I got to run a few more scans here tonight. See what else is out there. Uh, you know, we got the options room into Google um, on Friday, so depending where we open, uh, I was having account problems on Friday, so I tried to get a fill for myself, couldn't get one. But I'll take one if we get a dip. If we get a dip tomorrow, I'll take some Google here. 
Um, but I like that. I like Target. I like Goldman Sachs. I like... Yeah, there's a few more here. I'm not going to take a look at them with you, but... Um, Costco, Pepsi, Salesforce, Home Depot. You got some similar uh, action there in those lower time frames. So a few for you all to check out, uh, but I think this is the market we're in here. Granted, you know, when this thing comes in, it's going to come in pretty hard. One would think. Um, and, and that's probably a mistake in this kind of market, is to think. But one would think once we do get the pullback to the 8 EMA, to the 21 EMA, um, for a name like a Tesla here, it's going to come in pretty quick. But think, I think uh, instead of trying to guess, you know, when do we actually get the pullback, Play with the momentum here. Small positions, right? So keep your risk small. But even something like a Tesla. You know, last week, Henry from the options room, you know, he's pointed out things like this 15-minute squeeze. You know, into the close on Friday. Into the previous close, he had a 15-minute squeeze. Into the previous close, 15-minute squeeze. So the, uh, the moral of this weekend's prep video is the squeeze is your best friend. And in some markets, that squeeze is going to be perfect for the swing trades. Um, in this market, I think you dial it down to a 4-hour, 2-hour, a 1-hour, a 30-minute. Focus on the strongest stocks possible, but pick your spots wisely with a lower time frame squeeze. And do it do it with smaller position sizes, all right? But that's what I got for y'all. Interesting market there for the month of October. Um, I don't really have any doubts that November is going to be less interesting. So to that, I say let's buckle up. Let's get ready to dance here, and I'm looking forward to it. So tomorrow morning, I will be live for pre-market prep um, at 8.45 a.m. Eastern, 7.45 a.m. Central. So rest up this evening, and I look forward to seeing you all then.